Hey Mustangs, in this video we're going to be taking a look at neurons, which are the cells of the nervous system. And neurons are really neat and interesting because they do something that the other cells of the body don't or can't. Um, so these cells are actually designed in order to conduct electricity, uh, to transfer electric charges as signals throughout the entire body in order for the body to be able to communicate with itself. So neurons are very unique and interesting in their structure and what they're actually able to do. So let's go ahead and take a look at the neurons. Now this is a very generic neuron that we're taking a look at here. Um, so basically we're trying to simplify it as much as we can. But if you understand the parts of the generic neuron, you can apply it to other neurons that are actually parts of our bodies. Uh, so here, taking a look, um, there's main structures. And the overall shape of a neuron is very unique. And again, it has to be able to um, conduct electric charges in order to send information through the body. And that's one reason why you have this very unique structure for a cell. It's not the typical you know, circle that we draw, a spherical shaped cell um, that has the nucleus in the middle, mitochondria and all that stuff in the inside, all the organelles, um, but it has a very unique shape to, its, to, the, to the structure. So um, these short branches here. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to identify the actual names of these parts and then um, we're going to take a look at their functions, what they actually do. So here are these short little branches. You see this is the main part of the neuron here. Then you have these short branches here and then a really long branch coming off. Short branches that we see here, these are called dendrites. Okay? So those are dendrites. Those are all the dendrites you see here. Every single short little branch here. This is not a dendrite. It's a very long branch coming off. Um, so only the shorter branches are called dendrites. Here, this is the obvious one. Here's the nucleus. Okay, so here's the nucleus of this neuron here. The main part of the neuron here that houses the nucleus, this is the cell body. Okay, so this is the cell body here. So we have dendrites, the short branches, the nucleus, the main part, the cell body. The long branch coming off this direction here, this long branch is called an axon. Surrounding the axon, you have the myelin sheath. At the end of the axon, all these little ends here, um, another way to say end is like a, a terminal, it ends somewhere, a terminal is like an ending. So at the very end of the axons are called the axon terminals. So one, two, three, four, we have four axon terminals that we're seeing here. Now here, that's one entire axon and all of its parts. There's, here's the start of the next neuron here, the little branches you see kind of hidden off to the side. The neurons don't actually touch each other, so there's actually a space between one neuron to the next. This is kind of big here, um, but it's just to emphasize that there's a little space or gap between them. That space or gap is called a synapse. Okay? So you want to be able to name these parts just by looking at them. So if you're given a picture of a neuron, even, even if it's not this exact one, it should still be obvious that the short branches are the dendrites. You have the cell body, you have the nucleus. Long branches are called axons. Um, the parts surrounding the axons are called the myelin sheath, and then the ends, axon terminals, and the spaces between one neuron to the next is the synapse. So go ahead and pause and see how many you can label, and you want to be able to memorize these. If you memorize these, it makes it easier for function and how signals are, will actually be sent. All right, now what each part actually does. So we learned it from left to right for a reason here. So the dendrites, these short branches here, they pick up a signal and turn it to an electric signal. So this is where the electric signal actually starts. So they pick up the signal here and turn it to an electric signal, and we're going to learn in class exactly how that happens. Nucleus, it contains a DNA, <laughs> so the usual function of the nucleus there. The cell body, main part that holds uh, of the neuron that holds the organelles. So of course here, if you think about it, if you slow down, what organelle would you expect to find a lot of in these neurons. And they use up a lot of energy. So that's key if you think about that. So what type of organelle would you expect to find a lot of? You should be thinking of mitochondria. So there should be a lot of mitochondria in these cells because um, a lot of energy is needed to do what they do. So the, there's the uh, cell body. As you go down here, there's the axon. Remember the la large branches are called the axons. Axons carry the electric signal towards the next neuron. The myelin sheath. So the surrounding pieces you see here. So imagine something wrapped around. So this is like wrapped around. You kind of think of like insulating wire. OK, 
Okay. Um, if you think about cords and stuff that you use to plug into the walls, um, the wires are really on the inside, and you have this coating, this rubber coating on the outside. That's kind of how the myelin sheath is. Um, it's this outer coating, and the myelin sheath is necessary. Not all neurons have myelin sheaths, but the ones that do, it's absolutely necessary for those types of neurons. They insulate the axon, and they actually help speed up the electric signal. Um, for the cells that are supposed to have a myelin sheath but don't, bad news. Um, the signal would go so slow that it'd be difficult for communication to occur through those neurons. So the myelin sheath is going to speed up, insulate and speed up the electric signal. The axon terminals, important one here, they change the electric signal to a chemical signal. The chemical signal, we call them neurotransmitters, and there's a whole bunch of different types of neurotransmitters. And then finally you have the synapse, which is the space between the two neurons. Okay. Now, you're going to want to know the names of each part and also the functions. So make sure you know the names and the functions, and then pause the video and give it a try. See how many you can name and how many of the functions you can get. And then one of the most important things that you're going to need to know is how the signal actually travels through a neuron. So we have the dendrites that pick up the signal. Nucleus not really involved. Cell body not too much involved there. Axon, an important part. Myelin sheath axon terminals, and the synapse. So you should be able to describe how the signal is sent through the neuron. Now in class we're going to go into a lot more detail to see exactly how electric charges are formed and how it passes through the neuron. Um, but for now, you just need to know the basics. So I'm going to start here. So a signal gets picked up by a dendrite through the cell body here, through the axon. So the dendrites pick up an electric signal, carry it through to the axon. Axon carries it towards the next neuron that we see here. The myelin sheath insulates the axon in order to speed up the electric signal. At the end, the axon terminals do one of the most important things. The axon terminals change the electric signal to a chemical signal we call neurotransmitters. Okay, so this is a really, really, really important thing. Those chemicals, those little molecules that we call neurotransmitters, and there's different types of neurotransmitters, float across the synapse. So they leave the axon terminal and they float across the synapse. They hit receptors, uh, neurotransmitter receptors or chemoreceptors on the surface of a dendrite, and that starts the next signal in the next neuron. So again, you have the dendrites that pick up an electric signal, goes through, passes down the axon, and the myelin sheath speeds up the electric signal. At the axon terminals, the electric signal changes from an electric to a chemical signal instead that we call neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters float across the synapse, hit the receptors on the dendrites of the next neuron, and then start the signal all over again. So you're going to want to make sure you know that as well.